will help make sure that your insurance is more affordable and more secure. If you like your health care plan, you can he keep your health care plan. This is not some government takeover. If you like your doctor, you can keep seeing your doctor. Cost-cutting measures mirror most of the proposals in the current Senate bill, which reduces most people's premiums and brings down our deficit by up to $1 trillion over the next decade because we're spending our health care dollars more wisely. Reforms will lower premiums in a new insurance exchange while offering consumers protections that will limit out-of-pocket costs and prevent discrimination based on pre-existing conditions. Now, sadly, we know that those promises have been broken, and we're seeing more and more stories about the painful effects of Obamacare, especially when it comes to businesses and their employees. Now, coverage is being cut, wages are being slashed, hours are being reduced, and the list goes on. Now, here to give you some insight and explain exactly what is going on inside the workplace are three very successful business leaders. Now, Tasty Delight and Planet Smoothie Chairman Jim Amos is with us. White Castle. By the way, I love White Castle. <laughs> Vice President Jamie Richardson and JTM Food Group President Tony Moss. Guys, good to see you. Thank you for being with us because White Castle is my favorite. No, no offense, guys. I'm going to start with him. Um, you have offered family-owned restaurants, 406 and 12 say 406 restaurants? That's right, yeah. Okay, and you have offered insurance to your employees since 1924. Yeah, we're about to celebrate our 90th uh, anniversary of uh, offering great coverage to all uh, of our full-time team members. Yeah, I get it with extra onions and pickles and ketchup. Um, <laughs> but, so you, you have a plan, you cover 80% of the premium costs? Yep, we do. And you define full-time workers as 35 hours? That's what, we, yeah, that's our definition of full-time. Let's talk about Obamacare. What's the impact? I read that you're going up some 35% costs. That's what we're looking at right now. Uh, with the laws currently standing, that's going to increase our cost 35%. And while we work in castles, we don't have a treasure room with $10.5 million sitting around to be able to cover that cost. So for us, it's a big concern because we know one in four of our White Castle team members have been with us 10 years or more. So uh, these are our friends and our family. And, uh, you know, in the neighborhoods where we live and work, uh, you know, it makes a big difference. And it might not in Washington, D.C., but it does in, in our uh, castle neighborhood. Listen, I've been in the, I was in the food industry since I was a little kid. I was washing dishes at 12. I was a busboy, a waiter, a bartender. I mean, I did it all. And I even did the shopping for the restaurant. It's, uh, it's a very small margin, isn't it? It is. In terms of what you can get back on the product you're selling at a reduced price, right, because you want me to compete. Um, what does that mean? What is the real impact? Are you going to make some full-time employees part-time? Are you going to have to let some people go? You know, for us, Sean, to your point, uh, the average profit per employee in restaurants is about $750. For most businesses, it's $10,000 per employee. So for us, when we're looking at penalties and fines that are $2,000 or whatever it might be, our commitment, first and foremost, is to the 10,000 people who work at White Castle. So if you're full-time at White Castle, you're going to stay full-time at White Castle. What we're going to do, candidly, is stop our growth. Uh, before Obamacare, we were opening eight, nine new restaurants a year. Since then, uh, it slowed down dramatically. This year, we're going to open two new restaurants. What about those people that maybe want to work part-time, uh, are working part-time? You won't let them work about 30 hours, right? You're not going to go and get the threshold. You know, what we're going to do is protect the full-time folks, but what we're looking at right now is supporting everything we can. There's a bipartisan movement to actually uh, make 40 hours full-time as it relates to the law. So, you know, if we had a hot and tasty new sandwich we wanted to put into our restaurants and it wasn't right, we take a step back and talk about it and think about it and figure it out and work together to solve the problems. That's what we need to do with this law because uh, when you look at this definition of full-time, it's 30 hours per week. We hear about bifurcation of income. We're going to have bifurcation of scheduling. And it's going to hurt every restaurant and every retailer. So we have to work on that. We've got an extra year. We need to take that year to make it right, and we're hoping that both sides will listen. All right, Tony and Moss, how are you doing? We're doing outstanding. All right, so you have 400 employees. We do. Tell us about your health care. You uh, started the company. You've had health insurance for 33 years for your employees. Absolutely. Tell us where you are now. Yeah, no, we've got 400 employees, and we're growing, and we're, we're doing quite well. Uh, you know, but the reality is, is that over the last five years, insurance has gone up 42%. And our more and more different costs are being uh, laid into it. You know, uh, additionally, uh, you know, I got a little uh, business called the Zone Communication Group, 10 employees. I got an ministry I helped start, 10 employees. Those costs are going up 100%. What happens right. when you just heard yeah. the president say, you're going to save $2,500 yeah. a year. If you like your doctor, you keep yeah. your doctor. If you like your insurance, you keep yeah. your insurance. It's not happening, is no, it? No, it's not. I just, it's just a daggone on shame that uh, we're not doing it the true free American spirit, you know, with the capitalism the way it's supposed to be. And, you know, it, it even infringing upon your religious liberty now, you know, and, and having to start to have to cover fortification drugs and such forth that are 
as being a Catholic, it just really uh, that's the mandate. That's right. It totally uh, you know messes me up on where where I need to be. So much for religious liberty, I guess, in the Obama era. Um, what is the net impact? How many employees do you think you won't hire or may have to let go or may have to make fun? Yeah, I, I can't honestly say that that it, that it will impact us in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in the moral aspect, it does. But it is cost. It has some cost. It's going to continue draining our bottom line. It's certainly going to help us, you know, hurt us on that growth. And the less money you got, the less you can do. Tasty delight. Why do I think I would like you just as much as White Castle? Well, because uh, it's a lot healthier and it'll help you lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> you call me fat? No, no I don't say that. You apparently haven't looked at me very close. <laughs> <laughs> To, uh, to, to, to Tony uh, uh, and, and the audience, uh, obviously, and Jamie, uh, I was sitting here thinking, uh, uh, having read Andy Puzder's comments in the journal today about the real impact uh, of Obamacare, uh, that I, I was wondering if the facts actually make any difference anymore. Because the discussion goes on and on. We hear it in the audience. We hear it. You hear it every day. Uh, we hear it from our constituencies in the marketplace. Uh, and the troubling aspect to me, particularly as it relates to a couple of things, if I might. One, certainly is business. Uh, the negative diatribe and cacophony that's come out of Washington, D.C. for the last four or five years, as it relates to business, excoriating or scapegoating the people that provide the jobs uh, uh, and the tax revenue, uh, it is... It, it makes you wonder really what's going on, what's behind all of this. When the American system, our model of free enterprise, has pulled more people uh, out of poverty and created more wealth than any economic system in history. Why, why is that happening? Uh, you know, I, I had the same feeling as I was watching what was happening with our best veterans the last couple of days. Uh, having spent a couple of tours in Vietnam and worked for the last 35 years in support of veterans, uh, causes, particularly the hiring that's necessary now and the families that need help, <laughs> how could our government, our administration, or frankly this president, or anyone allow that kind of circumstance to happen? Leadership steps up and solves it unless, unless the real issue is a deep philosophical, ideological split uh, 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 about the way life works. If you're in business and private enterprise and you think it solves the problem, uh, then you intuit things differently. If you have no understanding of what that means, you're going to intuit a different way. It's fascinating. You guys have given us a real-life perspective, a reality check, if you will. I would suggest, I remember during the Reagan years when the president formed the Race Commission, best, brightest, business yeah. minds, government didn't listen to one of their suggestions. But they should be listening to you guys. Keep up the good work. I'm going to go to your place. I love White Castle. Cream on, John. I will, I will. All right. Now, coming up next, our studio audience, they'll respond to what these business leaders just told us. But first, we're going to hear from a group of average Americans who have been hit really, really hard by Obamacare. They have very emotional stories. That's coming up next. By the way, Mr. President, if you're watching, you need to listen to what your, your Obamacare is doing to real Americans. Perhaps your talking points need to be changed. Thank mm -hmm. you.